Welcome back to our Awesome Case of the Month series for August 2022. Feel free to comment below and I'll attempt to address any questions or concerns. This case was evaluated by the resident, Dr. Austin Daly, and the attending, Dr. Ken Rood, shortly before Dr. Rood's recent retirement. The case starts with a 19-year-old male presenting to the emergency department shortly after acute onset of unilateral testicular pain. The patient denied any preceding event or trauma and had never experienced a similar episode in the past. On examination, the left testicle was found to be exquisitely tender without overt enlargement or edema noted. It was felt the testicle was slightly higher than the contralateral side, yet no horizontal lie was noted. Given his pain, cremasteric reflex testing was difficult to perform. The emergency department differential of acute onset of testicular pain is fairly narrow, with the most concerning potential etiology being testicular torsion. This patient displayed some signs concerning for torsion, and the time-sensitive nature of this pathology requires emergent evaluation. While it would be great to consult urology and get the patient to the operating room, I have never seen urology take these patients without confirmatory imaging studies. Depending on your work environment, radiology perform ultrasound may not be readily obtainable at all times. Given this, do we have another option in these cases? In this case, the treatment team grabbed the bedside ultrasound to evaluate the patient's symptoms. The following images were obtained on bedside evaluation. In the first image, the linear transducer is utilized to image the bilateral testes in a short axis orientation with the probe placed transverse on the scrotum. A linear transducer is used given the higher resolution offered in this superficial structure. Elevation of the scrotum with the towel can help position the testicles to help with visualization. By visualizing both testicles, the operator is able to assess relative difference in size and pathology by giving a direct comparison. While this clip does have limitations, a portion of each testy can be seen. By being able to compare each side, we are able to see the subtle difference in echogenicity between the two, with the left testicle being slightly more hyperechoic or bright. Given the concern for torsion, the operators utilize color flow to image the symptomatic testicle in more detail. As many of you are aware, the color displayed only represents directionality, flow towards or away from the probe. Red and blue do not differentiate venous from arterial flow. No color flow was identified with color Doppler, and thus power Doppler was subsequently utilized given its increased sensitivity to image in low flow states. Power Doppler displays the strength of the Doppler signal in color rather than the speed and direction information. It has three times the sensitivity of conventional color Doppler for detection of flow. It is often utilized when attempting to image small vessels with low velocity flow. Again, no flow was visualized. The human body often provides us a comparison structure when we are evaluating for pathology. With that in mind, the treatment team visualized the right unaffected testicle. Color Doppler was utilized showing flow. Given the patient's presenting complaint, testicular exam, and now abnormal ultrasound, the team diagnosed acute testicular torsion. This diagnosis was made within five minutes of the patient's arrival to a room. His rapid diagnosis resulted in an expedited trip to the OR with urology where his testicle was detorsed without any morbidity to the patient. Upon follow-up, he was doing well without any complaints. I wanted to highlight this case for a couple of reasons. First, ultrasound was able to provide an immediate diagnosis that identified a time-sensitive process resulting in faster care for this patient where time really is testicle. Given the limitations and availability of radiology-performed ultrasound for definitive diagnosis, Having the skill set to rapidly evaluate for torsion is very important in my opinion. I will admit that the evaluation of flow to rule out torsion is slightly more complex than presented here, yet the images I have shown are easily obtainable and interpretable for even the novice sonographer. Just keep in mind that a definitive diagnosis or rule out requires a more in-depth study, which I'll touch on briefly in a second. However, knowing the ultrasound basics allows potentially faster triage and intervention quite beyond the information provided from physical exam alone. I want to at least touch on evaluation of the grayscale appearance of the testicle on imaging since I mentioned it in the case. In most cases, torsion will lead to a hypoechoic or darker appearance of the testicle when compared to the unaffected side secondary to edema. The more hyperechoic appearance in our case is likely secondary to the acuteness of the presentation and the rapid timing of his imaging. Do not rely on either the presence or absence of a change in grayscale appearance to either confirm or rule out the diagnosis. Utilization of color Doppler is the study that many of you are most familiar with. In our case, the absence of its presence and the clear contrast to the unaffected testicle was dramatic. The performance of color Doppler is operator dependent and I recommend scanning the unaffected testicle first in order to optimize scale and gain to visualize the most blood flow with our artifact. The simple step should give you more confidence either the presence or absence of flow in the affected testicle. 
One of the negatives of utilizing color Doppler is a limitation in low flow states, like in prepubertal patients with low testicular volumes. Unlike color Doppler, which assigns color based on flow either toward or away from the probe, Powler Doppler is traditionally direction insensitive, which is one reason it displays increased sensitivities for detecting flow. Many advocate for it to be the mode of choice when evaluating for flow, given its reported increased sensitivity. While quite easy, utilization of spectral and pulse wave Doppler might be beyond the comfort level of many viewers, yet inclusion of this step is essential to perform a true torsion rule-out study. This step will be performed in any radiology-performed study. This step is important because in early torsion, venous circulation is compromised first. If all you look for is color or power Doppler, you may only see arterial flow and have a false sense of reassurance. A careful evaluation of venous and arterial waveforms will allow complete evaluation and detection of subtle or early cases that would still require intervention. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this case and the ability to provide a diagnosis within minutes of arrival has shown how a simple bedside ultrasound can expedite care and increase the chance of testicular survival in torsion cases. And while I didn't cover other testicular pathology given the case's focus, ultrasound can provide rapid identification of other disease processes which potentially make torsion a less likely cause for the patient's pain. Feel free to comment below.